This is eighth and English salad, discussing inverse functions uh, with this algebra class. And we've gone up to the point of if you have a function, how do you find its inverse? I'm telling you how to do something like number seven here, which says determine if it's one to one. If it's one to one, find a formula for its inverse. Well, first of all, to find that inverse, you make sure f is one to one. Well, we haven't graphed any rational functions. So on number seven, to make sure it's one to one, how can we decide if it's one to one? Well, for our purposes, the type of functions we've graphed so far that aren't one to one are quadratic functions. We haven't, uh, I mean, we've decided quadratic functions are not one to one. If there's no even exponents in the statement, we're just going to sort of assume it uh, one to uh, one to one. So like on number seven, yeah, it's one to one. Uh, there's not any repeated y values. And if you have a graphing calculator, you might plug this in and look at it. Notice that the, it passes the horizontal line test. No horizontal line intersects the graph more than once. But uh, for our purposes, if it's not quadratic, we'll say it's one to one. If there's no even exponents in it. Next, uh, we're going to switch x and y. Remember that f of x is the same thing as y. Then solve for y. That's the thing. This step here is the one that could take a while sometime. And then replace y with f inverse. Replace y with f inverse. Well, we've already said, yeah, on number seven, uh, it's one to one. So now let's switch the x and y. Remember, f of x is a y, so you'll write it like this. x equals 2 over y plus 6. Now let's solve this thing for y. I'm going to do it like this. Just solve for y. I want to get the y by itself. Something that is x over 1 and just sort of cross multiply. xy plus 6x equals 2. Now I'm trying to solve the y, get the y by itself. So I would subtract 6x, negative 6x plus 2, or 2 minus 6x. And then the last thing I would do to get the y by itself, what would I need to do to get rid of this x? Yes, divide both sides by x. Now, once you have the y completely by itself, you're finished. Replace the y with f inverse, and we have a negative 6x plus 2 all over x. So that's how to find the inverse of a 1 to 1 function. Interchange the x and y, or switch x and y. Solve for y. Ooh. Solve for uh, y and uh, replace the y with f inverse. So negative 6x plus 2 all over x. So on this problem, what is that? Is it 1 to 1? Yes. What's its inverse? Negative 6x plus 2 all over x. Let's do another one of those. It's problem seven. Let's do problem number eight. If I can find it. So I'll have all of that there while y'all look for that. 
I mean, while I look for my problem number eight, it's here in the stack sample papers. Here it is. It's problem number eight. Same instructions as the other one. Problem number eight. Same instructions. It says determine whether this function is one to one and then find a formula for its inverse. Well, to decide if it's one to one, let's see, is this a quadratic function? Um, no, that's an x cube. I think we've graphed some cubic uh, functions. If you want to plug that into your graphing calculator, uh, to verify, but for our purposes, yeah, it's one to one. It, there's no even exponents. If you had an even exponent, like x squared, then if you plug a positive or a negative number in, you might get the same y values. But for right here, we're going to say, yes, it's one to one. Keep in mind that f of x is the same thing as y. So switch x and y. So we have x equals, oops, x equals y to the third minus three. Now solve for y. Well, to solve this thing for y, I'm going to go ahead and move the three over. And this semester, if we had a three, what then does a, excuse me, an exponent of three? What will get rid of that? Yes, cube root. We take a cube root, and we just, the cube root and the cube would cancel. So we have cube root of x plus three on the right, left, and just a y on the right. I know some of y'all don't like that y on the right, so there it is, written with the y on the left. All that's left to do now is replace the y with the inverse notation. So replacing y with f inverse, f inverse of x equals the cube root of x plus 3. Answer number eight. Is the function one to one? Yes. What's its inverse? F inverse x is the cube root of x plus three. A lot of important concepts here. A function needs to be one to one so that its inverse will be a function. And one to one means no repeated y values. How do we de formally define a inverse? Well, we say two one to one functions, f and g, are inverses of each other. If and only if f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. Notice on my math lab there, it was writing it like this rather than writing the fog. I was just using the big embedded parentheses. Okay. Now, if you ever use that, say, fog or golf to somewhat, in, uh, you know, that knows some algebra, and they say, Where did you hear that? Just remember that my first name, this is Timothy. Priscilla, not Anthony. I'm joking there, of course. But no, uh, generally people remember if you say fog and golf at the, you know, after a semester, someone say, did you do composition of functions in algebra? They're going to be like, I don't know. And if you say, did you do the fog and golf? They'll remember. So this wraps up inverse functions. So be sure to work on this stuff before next class meeting. 
and I'll see you all. Uh, oh, have a good weekend. I'll see you on Monday, Tuesday. Bye bye.